In this video, we're going to take a look to Umami Analytics. This is a self-hosted analytics tool that can be installed on your own server with Docker and Docker Compose. And you can take control of your analytics and uh, don't share the details with other providers like uh, Google Analytics. Lately, with um, moving to Google Analytics 4 and uh, the rules in the EU for the GDPR, things uh, gone wild into the analytics and uh, there are some nice tools that were developed that will help you track your website visitor easily and they are lightweight and they will not bloat your website. So Mom, it's one of uh, these tools. And uh, this is the interface of Umami. You see in here that I have a uh, website that that is tracked with Umami since uh, yesterday. To we'll show you some details. So this is the, their interface. In here you have the dashboard and in here you can add multiple websites that you can track. You can change the layout of this for like this if you want or you can make it simple. You have also a uh, dark mode that you can uh, choose. And in here you will have in the dashboard the uh, um, details. And uh, let's get into check for instance one website. If you check the view details, in here you will have the traffic. You can create like filters for your traffic. You can see the traffic in the list last period if you want. In here you have a nice graph with the details. You can see your pages that uh, were visited. You can see the referrals. You have the browsers with visitors. You have the OS. You have the device that visits your visit your, your um, website. In here you have a map with the countries and the details. In case you have events, you can also track track them. And if you want to, for instance, to go into more details, you can choose the more and you will uh, be redirected to a report that will show you the details. And in here you can filter the, the details. Uh, you have the real time traffic that you can check. You see that right now there are two visitors. You have an activity log with uh, the real time traffic with countries and uh, so on. You have the reports. So in here you have these sections that you can uh, use to create custom reports. So this is just a basic one that will show you, for instance, this which is the website, you choose the period, you have some fields that you can choose from, and you have some filters. If you, and if you run query, query, you will have the report generated in, in here. You can save the report. In websites, you can uh, view all your websites. You can add the theme websites in settings. You have the websites that can be added. You can add a website easily in here. You have the teams. You have the users that you can uh, create and assign. We have a profile for the user where you can change the language and the, the team. And yeah, this is like uh, Umami interface and this is um, how it's looking. And uh, in this video, we're going to see exactly how you can install it easily with the help of Docker, you will also have an SSL certificate for it and you can put it in a domain uh, or a subdomain that you can uh, utilize to access it and add it in your header of the website. So let's get started and see exactly how you can uh, install Umami. In here I have an article that uh, is written with all the details and Docker Compose files that you can, uh, you can find. So the first thing that you will need to be able to host uh, Umami Analytics with Docker Compose, you need to have a VPS server or a home lab server that you can utilize to um, run Docker and run uh, Umami. And in here you see, for instance, that you have the prerequisites section. I'm using Hesner, but you can use DigitalOcean or any other provider. And for the interface and uh, the administration for the Docker Compose, I'm using uh, DogJ to run my uh, containers because it has a nice interface and it makes things easier to, to manage. And uh, at the end, we're going to use Cloudflare tunnels to, to link our domain to the installation of uh, Umami. And uh, yeah, this is the things that uh, you will need. And I've already created a video with all of these details that I will let uh, into the descriptions that will help you set up all of these things for you. So you can watch that if you don't have already these things set up. So in here I have the Docker Compose file. So let's uh, check this. I have to compose uh, files in here. One, it's just installing the database and it's installing the application. 
And the second one that it's recommending, it's also adding a backup to your uh, to your database. So basically there is a Docker image DB backup from uh, tired of it and it will help you schedule backups with the native uh, Postgres backup utility in a folder that you are going to, to choose. And uh, yeah, we are going to check this into the details. So even if you are using uh, Docker volumes to store your data, it's still recommended to have a SQL dump that you can utilize to import it in case something happens with the, with the data in the volume and you cannot uh, restore it. So that's why we are going to use this uh, Docker compose file to have everything uh, that we need in case something goes wrong. And in here I have the docg installation and in here you see the, the interface, but you can do this easily with uh, docker compose commands is a, is the same. You just create the folder locally and you run the docker compose up minus D and in here in docg you have the options to give the stack name and for this I will just call it uh, umami. And in here you will paste the Docker Compose file and let's go and uh, review this Docker Compose file and what it has. So the first is the image that uh, you will uh, download. This is the Postgres to Umami latest image. This is for the, for the software and then you'll have the port that will work. So I will choose the 3000 port, but you can uh, modify it and use whatever port you want and in the environment i have the url connections to the database i've created some variables in here where you can change the postgres user and postgres password and the postgres db name if you want you will have the app secret that you will need to create you can create just a random string of characters and you can add it in here and uh, this is depends on uh, umami database and it will restart in case it's not stopped so you can uh, you can have it online in case something goes wrong and your server it it goes down and in here you have the health checks options for this container and in here you have the database it is uses postgres it is the 15 version with alpine and in here we have the environment in the postgres db user password and in here I have created a volume that it will be stored in the same location where you have the Docker Compose file and it is pointing to the Postgres data. And uh, yeah, in here you have also the health check for, for this that it's running. And in here you have the extra settings for the database backup. This is not uh, mandatory, but it's good to have it. Uh, I give it a container name because this will be only used for the Umami database backup and in here you have the image you have the backup uh, that uh, you will uh, you will uh, link it to a docker volume same it will be in the same place like the other one in the backups folder and we are going to check and see what we have in there and in here you have the environment for this application you have a link into the description or in the article with all of these parameters and what they are doing but basically in here we have some parameters that it will tell the image what the db you are uh, you are using what is the db host that needs to be back up and in here you have the details for the for the database and how you can connect to it and make the export here you have the db backup interval this is in minutes and it is like uh, 12 um, hours you can modify it as you like here is the cleanup time so uh, to not have like all their backups again it's in minutes you can uh, choose this and uh, uh, put whatever option is for you and this is to create a checksum and this is to have a compression for your uh, for your exported files so this is not to enable the monitoring and the same here it will start unless it's stop and in here you have the en environment details that you can uh, add Again, if you're using just Docker Compose, you can just create a .env file in the same location and you can uh, add the details in there. And in here, I will just go and add the environment details. And these are the environment details. Basically, there are four environment details that we're going to add. Let's go. And in here, you see that you have the Postgres user. You can put what user you want, the password for the, for the user. You have the name of the database and in here we have the app secret this is just a random uh, string that is generated you can add it to an external network if you if you want to but uh, yeah 
doc you will create one for you if you don't add it so these are the details and right now we just need to save this and right now the configuration it's saved and you see in here all the containers and why right now what we need to, to do is to go and start it and uh, this should start the database and then the application with the backup so you see in here that it's quite uh, quite fast and at the end you will have the access details that is basically the the port and the server ip and uh, right now we should have the application running and what we need to do is to add this to a subdomain or a domain so we can use it externally and have an SSL certificate and so on. For this, we're going to use the Cloudflare with Cloudflare tunnels because it's offering also protection and it's quite easy to, to use. And in here, I have already a tunnel set up for, for this and I will add a public host name in here. So in here, you will want to add a subdomain or the main domain if you are using the main domain to track this. But for this, purpose I will just uh, use like uh, something like uh, uh, for just a name you use, usually you shouldn't put analytics or things like that in the domain or the subdomain because it will be blocked by the by the ad blockers so that's why for instance this is just a name that I'm setting it will be like docs and in here I will choose the domain from the list and in here we have the type it will be HTTPS and in here you need to put the server IP address with the port you have chosen. Uh, in my case, I will use the actual server IP for uh, for this. Let me go and uh, fetch it. And I'll put it like this. And this is a server IP with a 3000 port that we have assigned. You can use other if you if you want. Right now, I'll just hit the safe host name. And uh, right now the docs.bdas.com it should have uh, umami installed and uh, next thing is to go and access this and let's see let let me log out from this or open a new incognito windows for this because in the beginning when you will set this up, you will be prompting for a user and a password and you have some default user that is the admin one and you have the umami as a password. Okay, you see here that right now you don't have any website and the next thing that we are going to need to do is to go and change our password for this. You need to go to settings, profile and in here you have the options to change the password and you put the current password and the new password that you want for your uh, account okay and then you can choose your language you can choose the time zone you you want and uh, you have the team and uh, yeah right now you secure your account and the other things that you need to to do is to go to websites still in settings and in here you can add your website and the website name you put the name that will be displayed in here and the uh, domain and right now you have the site added and to access the tracking code you just go to edit and in here you have the tracking code uh, url that you need to you need to go and add it in the header of your website if you have WordPress. It will be easy if you have other static websites, same, it shouldn't be too complicated. And in here you see that you have the script option, you have the script and with data website ID. And this will tell uh, Umami where to send the details. Then you can enable a server URL for this website if you want to share it externally. You can reset the website. In here you can add users for this website. and. Uh, so on and right now for instance if we go and uh, check the website you'll see that you have the website in here if you go to view again you will see the details but uh, in this case uh, you will not see anything because i need to add the coding to the the website to have this uh, 
this working? In this way, you are self-hosting your MAMI analytics on uh, Docker Compose easily. And uh, if we're going to check, for instance, I have here Dazzle, and then this basically, it's a tool that will uh, show you exactly how much the container is utilizing. You will see, for instance, that uh, you have the umami in, in here. You see that the utilization for this is not that high, but again, uh, remember that this is just uh, depends on the traffic that you are sending. So if you have like thousand visitors a second, you will need a more powerful server for, for this to, to work. The database container is not actually using anything. And the other thing that we can check is to see if the backups are, are working. So right now I am in the stack folder where I have the Docker Compose files. And if we go to Mami, you are going to see, for instance, in here, you have the backups and compose file with the umami db data that is the database volumes and in here we have the backups folder and the backup should have been already started for this after we we started the container and in here you see that you have the uh, pgsql dump with all the details and um, yeah you can uh, make a logic to move this to a third-party cloud provider to have it securely stored in case something goes wrong to have something to to revert back and don't lose your traffic. This is Umami Analytics and this is how you can install it in your own uh, server and uh, you will get control on your analytics. I hope you enjoyed the video. In case you like what you have seen, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the, to the channel. Thanks for watching and uh, See you in the next video with other tutorials.